G'day, I'm Leo, and in this video I'm going to show you something really special. These are construction lights, but attached to them are barn doors. But these aren't the barn doors you think they are. These are really inexpensive and easy to make barn doors made out of foil trays. I'm going to show you every aspect in doing this conversion. It's really simple and it's really cheap. And there's no excuse for not having barn doors on these types of lights. I know for a fact that these are the choice of lights of many, many YouTube producers. You see them in their videos, they've got them hanging up in the ceiling, they've got them down on the ground. I know for a fact that Mr. Buckley has these types of lights. So it's time to get serious. It's time to control where the light's coming from and it's gonna improve your videos. And that's what this is all about, making an improvement. Making an improvement which is really cheap and effective to make. But before we get started, there's always that little warning. Before we start building, let's look at how barn doors control the light coming from typical work lights. Via some careful adjustments, you can be very selective where light falls. This is essential if you're serious about making videos. These barn doors will be the easiest improvement you will ever make to your lights. Barn doors also facilitate in the application of gels and diffusion, as they set up a standoff away from the extreme heat of the lamp. The lights I'll be using in this demonstration are the typical quartz halogen work lights with 500 watt bulbs. You're also going to need some foil containers. Two sizes are needed and I found mine at a local $2 shop in packs of five. Each light requires two long and two short foil doors. Here we see the dimensions for the long side and here we see the dimensions for the short side. The only other item you'll need is some high temperature black paint. Amazingly, the total cost for each light conversion is under $5. Here's my tip on how to find a good foil container for your lights. Try to match your required length to the base length of the foil container. Here we see the relationship between the lights and the foil base dimensions. Finding a match here will really make the job easy. Here we see a folded set of doors and how they match the lights dimensions. Now let's fold some foil, the large door first. I will mark out where the first fold needs to finish. It's important to be accurate in these first folds. Making sure our folding is keeping square, carefully flatten the side against the base. That's the first fold done. The second fold involves folding the other side down, leaving a tab of foil exposed. Again, marking out helps in keeping the folds accurate. Ensure both ends are flattened out. The second fold needs a fair bit of flattening out. We're now dealing with three foil layers. Ensure this fold is well detailed. The tabbed edge will be used later to lock all the folds together and create a rigid edge. Next we will fold the two ends over. This will reveal our final shape. These next two folds are the most difficult and I strongly recommend using a template to mark out the folding region. It's important not to cover the tabbed area when folding the ends. Again, there are many layers of foil which need attention. The fifth fold is our tab, which locks all the previous folds together. Again, being accurate here helps provide a lovely product. This fold also provides a backbone to the door's edge. We're looking for a straight line when it's all folded up. Okay, the work on the folded side is done and it looks good. Now we will make a 90 degree bend on the short side. This gives us an attachment point and will work as a foil hinge. It's also time to work on the neat side of the foil door. Again, marking the area out assists in your folding. You'll need around 10 centimeters for the attachment area. This may vary depending on your brand of work lights. Your first doors are always trial and error. This fold is best done using a ruler as a guide, making sure the work is parallel to the other straight edge. There's one last fold to do. It's only small and assists in attachment of the doors. I found it easiest to pull this fold using a ruler. Once it's started, continue and completely fold over. The importance of this is explained a little later. It's the area where the light housing clamps the foil. That's it for folding foil, 
and it's always good to check your work against an example door. The processes for folding the smaller door are identical. This example has been sped up. Again, it's always good to check your work. And now we have one of each size door. It's off to the paint shop and only use high temperature paint ensure to paint both sides. We're up to the final thing which needs to be done and that's installation. Open the light up as if you were changing the bulb. Our barn doors fit into the area between the glass and the glass retainer. Pull out the glass. Usually there's a lug retaining it. We'll see some small lugs which hold the glass firmly against the seal. These are the key to holding our foil barn doors into position. You can see the impression made on this door by the lugs. The trick to installing all the doors is settle the glass in, riding the glass retaining lug. It's now a matter of working the doors into the space between the glass and the retainer, making sure the folded edge goes completely home. This can be tricky so be patient and thorough here. Once you feel everything is in position, click the glass into position. This example only uses the mechanical clamping of the glass surround. That's where the final fold comes into play. You will notice the foil has changed the closing up as you will feel the lugs bite into the foil barn doors. Again, screw the housing shut. The good news is that's basically it. Your work lights have just become your video lights. This method of making barn doors can be translated to smaller work lights. Here we see a 250 watt light which required silicon to attach the doors. You will need to investigate your options depending on your brand of light. On their first operation there will be some smoke from the newly painted barn doors. Don't panic, it'll stop. If you're interested in a more robust solution, I strongly recommend Mark Absalon's Barn Doors for Work Lights. In coming months I'll do a video on my custom made tracking system. It's something that I've used in many, many videos. It's really simple to make, and best of all, it's inexpensive. It's been a bit of a long dry video, this one, but now let's have some pyrotechnic fun. I enjoy rewarding people who this watch the whole the video. That's a little YouTube trick of mine. A while back I developed some pyrotechnic charges which were made from poly garden pipe. I love making charges from everyday items. These were developed for a scene in a film and this effect became a cutaway to a CGI shot. All my work was left on the cutting room floor. These charges are loud and powerful and did a beautiful job of simulating the effect of a laser blast. much longer than I ever thought. This is hard. How do you vloggers do it? How do you do all this talking to camera without fluffing up? This is really hard. I'm never going to be a vlogger. I know that. From this day on, I will never be a vlogger. Final.